da 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 But I've been away a year. I'm a little rusty. So be nice to me. So what are we going to do today? What are we going to do today? Well, we are going to talk about the classic Hollywood monster movies that make that make all monster movies what they are today. Like they the, they are the first, they're the introduction to the genre. Um in, in early Hollywood history, early movie history. I want, to, I want to talk about those. And the other thing I want to do is, um, oh, I'm coming a little hot, but I'm not clipping. Yeah, so the other thing that I want to, I want to do is uh, uh, talk a little bit about um, how, these, how these monsters sort of uh, defined our popular image of these monsters and sort of the misconceptions that we have about these monsters there we are okay so let's start with first things first um a, a review of halloween terms first of all halloween is always on october 31st and it is not a it is not an actual official u.s holiday it's it's specific to america Although other countries kind of celebrate Halloween, but more like a, an international festival, you know. But it's but it's a cultural experience in America. And every calendar will say today is Halloween on October thirty first. But if you have school on that day, for example, uh, this year it's on Monday. It's on Monday. If if you are uh in school you uh you have to uh you have to go to school um so the, the so this is sort of, again a review of the basic halloween terms very very basic halloween terms uh, trick or treat is what we say and not not all of us but children the children say this and and, and what do the children do what are they doing when they say trick or treat well well they go trick or treating which is to visit uh houses go around the neighborhood and visit the houses and and go blah blah blah, blah and, and ask for candy uh jack-o-lantern jack-o-lantern usually there's a punctuation but i chose not to do it this time uh, i've got my lights my little uh, jack-o-lantern lights up here a little here little and also have my spooky ghost spooky ghost and my skeleton his name is fred you can barely see him there you go. He's supposed to be glow in the dark, but he does not glow in the dark. Uh, thanks, Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree uh, skeleton that does not glow in the dark. Uh, costumes are very important. Children will wear costumes when they go trick-or-treating. And uh, teenagers and young adults wear, wear costumes when they go to Halloween parties because teenagers and young adults uh, don't go trick-or-treating. They go to parties. And they will wear a costume. And haunted house. It doesn't have to be a house. It can be anything. Actually, anything can be haunted. Haunted just means a ghost lives there. So you can have a haunted house. Like in my background. That is a house that is haunted. A ghost lives there. Or you can have a haunted car. A haunted uh, vase. With flowers in it, a ghost will live there. I don't know why a ghost will live there, but hey, I have seen stories where it's a haunted face. A haunted clock. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen I've seen uh movies with that haunted clock doing something weird. Anyway. So why don't we jump into our discussion? That's my other cue. Uh, so I kind of uh, kind of spoiled it <laughs> before. The Wolfman, right? The Wolfman. Uh, this is it. This is a classic, classic monster movie uh, from uh, ninety years ago. Actually, I think it came out in 1940, 1941. And uh, a couple of important things you need to know are the actors in this. This is relatively early in their acting careers, and they became serious movie stars later on in the 40s and 50s. But, you know, kind of an early days, actors are just taking any acting job they can just to kind of, you know, they, they need to pay the bills. They need to pay the bills, you know. 
And so uh, Claude Rains and uh, 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 Ralph Bellamy, uh, they, they're, they're the main actors in this movie, The Wolfman. The Wolfman comes from very, very old folk tales about werewolves. And a werewolf is a, is a person who is cursed to become a wolf every full moon. And when they become a wolf, they don't look like a like a regular wolf, like a like a dog. Uh, they kind of look like a combination of a wolf and a man. But they have a wolf's hunger, an animal uh, instinct, an animal feeling. They behave like an animal, not a logical thinking person. And so that's supposed to be scary. That's supposed to be scary. When uh. When you have no control over yourself and you and you attack even your friends and your family, you attack them because you're a wolf, you're you're an animal. You don't know any better. And especially when uh, the, when the the people in the neighborhood start attacking you, you get defensive. You get defensive. Why are you attacking me? Well, I'm attacking you back. Uh, yeah. And so that's the wolf man. And. Uh, very early days of special effects and makeup effects. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do I recommend it? It's 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 actually a, a kind of a short movie. It's about an hour long. And in something that's going to be very typical, very typical in this discussion, is it it feels long despite being. Uh, a short movie, it's gonna it feels it feels like a long movie. Anyway, so that's the Wolfman. What is the other one? Uh, the Mummy. The Mummy is when we are introduced to the the horror icon, the famous Hollywood actor who was famous because of the monsters, Boris Karloff. Boris Karloff. He's done many classic monster movies and he did the mummy what is a mummy uh a mummy is uh in the old days a very long time ago two thousand years ago three thousand four thousand years ago uh when rich people and royal people died their bodies were wrapped up and then they were buried and when your body is wrapped up after you die and you are buried, you are called a mummy. Your body is a mummy. And in this movie, in this movie, uh, a, 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 a royal person, actually, I think he's a, a, a priest of some kind. Uh, he is buried alive. He, he is wrapped up like a mummy alive and he's buried and, and left to die. Uh, but his his anger and his and his desire for revenge, he wants revenge so bad. Why did you bury me alive? That's terrible. Um, he he. Well, I guess he dies, but but he becomes an undead, and that's the monster. Like he, uh, two thousand, three thousand years later, uh, some scientists from today open up his tomb, his grave. And they think, oh, we have a dead guy, and we're going to study what, what, what was life like three thousand years ago. But at night, at night, uh, what we don't realize is the mummy comes back to life, to 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 steal the woman who looks like his wife from three thousand years ago. Scary, scary! Oh my gosh, the mummy! There you go. That's the mummy. And what is scarier than a mummy? Well, what's scarier than a mummy is something you can't see. And that is what this movie is about. This movie is called The Invisible Man. And as you can see from this movie poster, uh, what's scary is uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's two stories. It's the story of science. When, when someone, when a scientist is willing and ready to break all the rules for science and, and what are the consequences, is there a punishment? Do you get punished for not following the rules? For example, if I don't follow the rules at my job, what are the consequences? Well, I would get fired. 
that would not be good. I'd have to look for another job. Which I guess I could. Kind of, I guess I need to, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> um, but but in this story, the scientist he doesn't get fired. Uh, a terrible thing happens to him, and he becomes invisible. And then the second story is, um, because he he becomes invisible, uh, he can see the things that happen around him, but no one can see him, and that's kind of a bad thing. And he also sees the people kind of move on with their lives. And kind of forget about him. And that makes him mad. And then he goes crazy. And then so, yeah, anyway, anyway, that's a, see this, yeah. Anyway, you can see from the picture. Oh, look, you can't see the picture because it's invisible. Ha <laughs> ha that's my joke. Anyway, this is the picture. Uh, this is a great one because, again, it's another movie with Claude Rains. And what is interesting about this movie is it was made by one of the earliest, earliest, earliest movie directors and movie producer, uh, uh, producers, uh, Carl Lemley. And also one of the first movie theater, uh, movie theater owners, uh, he had a monopoly on movie theaters. Back in the early silent era, the silent movie era, yeah, he was a very, he's very popular. He's very important in early American history. And so he produced uh, this, this movie, uh, The Invisible Men based on an H.G. Wells novel and actually uh, very, has very, very little to do <laughs> with the actual uh, novel. And the novel, the, 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 the actual novel is a very, very short novel. It's not very long, if I remember correctly. It, it, no, it's not very long because I remember I once read it on a stream. I read the whole book and it, and it took me like two weeks but not two weeks of long long reading is two weeks of you know short pretty pretty short streams like an hour hour ish uh and i read it in two weeks so it's not a very long book actually uh but the movie very little to do and there you go that's the invisible man and how to follow up the invisible man i don't know i don't know i mean we have the wolf man that's that's a that's a person who becomes a wolf because of a curse. You have the mummy, whose whose own uh, anger uh, turns him into undead, and he wants to get his revenge against everybody. And then you have the invisible man, which is a scientist who goes crazy. Well, what about a man who becomes kind of a ghost, not a real ghost, but the Phantom of the Opera? This one is is one where we have another uh, really big uh, horror movie acting icon, Lon Chaney. Lon Chaney was another actor who was famous, like Bor Boris Karloff. Another one we're going to see is Bela Lugosi. That's later. I'm kind of teasing the future here. But um, yeah, Lon Chaney was another actor who was famous for only making monster movies. And it's another Carl Lemley uh, produced movie. So the story of Phantom of the Opera, it's from a, it's act, it's actually from a French novel, not an actual opera. It's not a, it's, this is not a musical. So the Phantom of the Opera is not an actual opera. It's a novel. It's a French novel. And, but of course it, it became so popular. So of course it became a musical, eventually it became a musical. And then a hundred years later, and actually not 100 years later, like 70 years later, um, Andrew Lloyd Webber turned it into an actual very popular Broadway and, and London stage musical, The Phantom of the Opera, which I have seen several times. And I own the, the original musical uh, soundtrack. It's uh, so great. It's so great. So many great songs on there. But the original movie, the first movie, uh, the Phantom of the Opera, and it's about a it, it is about a man who was once a famous opera singer, and then a an accident happens to him, and he loses his career, his fame, his wealth, and the love of his life. 
because his face uh, is is damaged. He is is injured because of this accident, and and he's so embarrassed by what happened to his face that he covers it with a mask, and he hides in the catacombs. In the Paris catacombs. Now, if you remember from the last live stream, I talked about scary places, and I finished by talking about the Paris catacombs. Right? Do you remember that? Well, this is where the Phantom of the Opera lived. And and he lived in the Paris catacombs. Par, part of them, they, the catacombs are so huge. And, and part of them were, was under a famous opera house in Paris. And one day, a, a young actress is auditioning to to perform in in the opera in the opera house and the phantom of the opera f falls immediately in love with her and he will do anything anything to make her become a famous star so he starts killing murdering uh, the competition and and anyone who won't make her eventually become the star and eventually uh, her singing co-star, uh, they, they start to fall in love because they're co-stars and they work together and they practice together. They spend so much time together. But the Phantom of, Phantom of the Opera is jealous. He's jealous of this other of this other man, this new suitor. Um, that I know that's part of the story. Ah, and that's Phantom of the Opera. But I have some problems with the Phantom of the Opera. Well, one of my problems is he he isn't. Uh, he hasn't he becomes a monster because in society if you look bad if if you have a, 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 a an injury to your face and you don't look handsome you can't be a star you can't be loved society says so and I kind of have a problem with that you know that that's just making a general statement and just saying hey wait a minute maybe maybe you know um, society should be more accepting of people with challenges, right? They are people with challenges. They are not challenged people. They are not bad people. They are people with challenges. And also, uh, I guess, I guess, in current current society, we can't call people disabled. Um, a a part of me understands that's that is not a kind thing to say, but a part of me also understands that it's actually a very neutral word, and we've added meaning to it. Uh, there are far, there are far worse words that we use for people who are challenged, right? And I think I think a lot of us are too quick to put meaning to words. And, you know, some words, they should have meaning. They should have value. And we should constantly evaluate whether we need to give those words power. And some words, I kind of feel like mm, it's a technical word. Like It's like saying, you know, I don't like this pair of headphones. Well, uh, well, headphones, maybe maybe that's a derogatory word. Well, it's a, it's a device. It's, it's a product. Well, if you can prove to me that using that word is an inappropriate and it's going to hurt a lot of people's feelings, then yeah, okay, then I'm going to change. But if, but if it hurts one person's feelings and they can't really explain to me what it is that that hurts their feelings, but that that just feelings are hurt. Well, well, then I would apologize, and then not use that word around them. <laughs> But in general usage, headphones are headphones. They're things you wear to, to listen to music. And then as, if somebody does make a convincing argument that, hey, you know, this word should not be used because it's very hurtful to lots of people, then absolutely. I, I don't want to do that. I kind of have a, a mixed feelings about the word disabled. Um, I, I actually have the same problem with challenged. I, I don't I don't like to, to use that word sometimes, but but at the same time, is, is there another word to talk about a large group of people who have obstacles that make their life more work than someone who is privileged? I'm deaf. 
I, I am challenged. My life is challenged. My life is challenged at work all the time. And people, I have to tell people again and again and again and again, I can't hear you. I'm deaf. And they forget minutes later, <laughs> you know. Um, and so that comes to my next point, which is the hunchback of Notre Dame. I, I know this is a, a, a very popular love story. But I don't like this for the same reason that I have problems with the Phantom of the Opera. In the Phantom of the Opera, something happens to this handsome and successful performer. His face is his fame and his career. In Phantom, in, in, I'm sorry, in The Hunchback of Notre Dame, well, the problem is this is a, a person who was born differently. And that they were born with challenges that they eventually learned to adapt and overcome. But the rest of society has decided, oh, this person is terrible and we need to hide them away from the, the children. Something dumb like that. Yeah, and that's and that's that, that's base that's the basic story of, of the of the hunchback of Notre Dame. And in the in the movie, um we we sort of see that the love interest, the beautiful woman, um, feels sympathy. But because she is a woman, and this movie was made in the 1930s, 1930, 1931, um, women did not have the same privileges and rights that they do today. They were not equal. They are not equal today, actually. They're, they have serious obstacles to equality. But, but there were even more obstacles to their equality uh, 100 years ago. And so this this woman shows some sympathy towards this this other person who was born with a, a hump on their back. That that's that's their problem. They have a hump on their back. They were born with a hump on their back. And that and society says they are bad. Why are they why is this person bad? Well they have a hump on their back. They have to hide them. Also, also, uh this this person was born from uh, an inappropriate relationship between two people and he was born because it was a sin the relationship was a sin and so he was born bad because of his parents sin that's that's weird that's that's a, not a good story that's not a good message to send and and he was born poor and in those days poor was bad poor you, you did not want to be poor. You want to be rich and successful. And so many problems with this story. Many problems with this story. So if you do watch this movie, if you do watch this movie, understand it was made at a time in American history uh, that uh, you know, we need to revisit and maybe maybe compare to our current times and see how, have we grown as people? Have we grown as a society? Again, I kind of have problems with the story. But the next movie is one. I need to keep. I need to move very fast here. The next movie is an interesting one. Interesting, interesting one because there's a lot of confusion. Who is the monster in this movie? It's not very clear. It is not very clear who is the monster. Uh, in the in the book, in the in the Shelley novel, it is clear. It is clear who is the monster. The scientist, is na his name is Frankenstein. His creation, the monster, the creature, it is Frankenstein's monster. So in, in Hollywood, the monster should be called Frankenstein's monster because Frankenstein was a scientist, not the monster. But because of this movie, we only know the monster his name is Frankenstein, when that's not true. The monster's name is not Frankenstein. <laughs> the monster's name is Monster. And also, is he a monster? He, in, in, the, in, the book, in the book, he becomes a monster because people attack him. That's all. He, he, isn't, he, he isn't reborn into a monster. He's reborn in, and society says, oh, Look at that ugly, terrible thing. And 
it shouldn't be alive because science is made by science, not by God or something like that. Um, and so, yeah. And, but but really, at the end of the day, in the in the book and the true story of the of Frankenstein's monster is Frankenstein the scientist. He's the monster. He's the one. He's the guy. But in this movie, it is not. It is this creature, the green guy that you see in the poster. And forever after, forever after, all of the uh, Frankenstein monster movies, Frankenstein becomes the monster. That's the name of the monster. And it's kind of funny. Yeah, there you go. So I've been saving the best for alas, my favorite monster movie. And probably my favorite monster. Bella Lugosi is the actor, classic actor. Uh, later in his life, he wanted to do dramatic roles and romantic roles, but no one would give him, no one would give it to him because he was famous for only doing horror movies and only doing one kind of horror movie. He's done so many kinds of this monster, and he got really bored of it. He got really bored of it, but, but Hollywood wouldn't give him any work. Unless he did Dracula. That's right. My favorite monster and my favorite monster movie is the original 1931 Boris Karloff. Oh, um, yep. No, sorry. Bella Lugosi. Sorry. Bella Lugosi. Bella Lugosi monster. Ah, oh, Boris Karloff. Why did I say that? Boris Karloff. Yeah, he ended up becoming Frankenstein, I think. Um, but yeah, Bella, Bella Lugosi. Oh, man. Uh, so much to say, but I don't have time. Anyway, Dracula. Um, what kind of monster is he? He is a vampire. And what makes him special special is he is a, a, a nobleman. And, and, and among the vampires, he's royalty. And, uh, and this is based on a, a novel, roughly based, lo very loosely based, on a novel uh, by Bram Stoker. And another thing about this movie, a lot of these movies, they tended to be very short. This movie is also short. I think it's an hour and maybe an hour and 15 minutes long, maybe. And again, a short movie. And, and not much happens in this story. Not much happens in this story. It's just, uh, there's a lot of uh, travel scenes. There's a lot of waiting scenes. There's a lot of talking scenes not a lot of action there's some action some action but not, not a lot not a lot of other things not a lot, a lot of situations um we think of a typical movie it has five acts and it should have uh, anywhere from eight to twelve um scenes in each act uh there should be at least a dozen beats for you know of, of, of action like an, you look at it you look at a 30 minute tv show there should be a dozen beats of action uh between every commercial break so something needs to be happening every minute like several things happening every minute there's probably 10 beats in this entire movie probably maybe i'm making a guess i'm probably exaggerating there's more but anyway it's a very slow movie a very slow movie but I love it. I think a lot of people would be very, very, very bored. Very bored of this movie. But but I like to have it on in the background. It's got some great lines. Some fantastic lines in this movie. Anyway. Dracula. And those are your classic monster movies. If you want to practice your English, watch these movies with subtitles on. And uh, have fun. Yeah. There you go.